What's up guys? So I heard you wanted an even easier tutorial to put avatars into VR chat. Um, well, I'm gonna skip all the bullshit and we're gonna go through this as fast as humanly possible. Alright, so first steps first. Make yourself a VR chat account uh, on VRChat.net. Not through Steam, on VRChat.net. Play around in VR chat for a while, make some friends, um, favorite some people, play around for a while until you're able to upload your own avatars. Then come back to me. Once that's done, you're going to go into here and you click this download section on vrchat.net and you're going to download Unity and you're going to download the VRChat SDK. You're going to put all that stuff in one folder. And the next thing is you're going to need to find some models. Now, there's a bunch of places you can download models. Most people know about DeviantArt, but most people don't know about 3d.nicovideo.jp, which has a bunch of stuff that says you can even use them in VRChat. So if you want to be a good boy, you can actually find models that people say go ahead and modify them and use them in VRChat, which is great. Um, another place you can find models specifically for VR chat that are allowed to be used in VR chat as per the model thing, so you don't have people spurging out on you, is booth.pm. Um, these guys actually have a presence in VR chat, and they even have a VR chat world set up, which is super cool. Um, the next thing you want to do is download Blender. You want Blender 2.79b. Now, Blender 2.8 works with this, but not as well. So, for now, get Blender 2.79b. And I'll revive, revise this video once you can use it in the other version. Next you want to download Cat's Blender plugin. Catsblenderplugin.com. Couldn't be any easier. You click on this button here, it'll take you to a GitHub link, which is this page, and then you're going to click here, which will download the current version of Cat's Blender plugin. Hopefully you've been following along so far, or a folder that you've downloaded some stuff into. So you should have a model that you've unzipped by clicking like download, like that, and then agree to the terms of service and, and download the model somewhere. Now, I'm going to use an MMD model, but you can use practically anything you want. But I just want to demonstrate this because a lot of times all you'll find is PMD and PMX files. The good part is, is on Nico Video and on Booth.pm, you'll actually get Unity packages and you'll even get FBX files. So, things couldn't be easier these days. Alright, so you're going to go into Blender. You're going to hit Escape here. You're going to hold Control on your keyboard. And you're going to draw a big fat line around all this stuff. Um, make sure you get all of it. Press delete on your keyboard to delete everything on the screen. The next thing you're going to do is go to file. You're going to go to user preferences. You're going to go to add-ons. You're going to click install add-on from file. You're going to find the place where you downloaded your Cat's Blender plugin SDK. And that's going to be here for me. I'm going to click on this. And you're going to click install add-on from file. Once you've done that, you want to make sure that the add-on has a check mark in it. Click Save to Use Settings and close this. It's going to do a bunch of stuff, and with any luck, you're going to have Cats, MMD, and VRM Helper, and maybe even Material Combiner. If you don't have that, you want to go into Cats first, and before we do anything else, you want to make sure that you have Material Combiner. So you're going to go down here, you're going to click Optimization, and then somewhere in here, you're going to have a button to download the thing. You're going to complete the same steps that you did earlier. You're going to go to Install Add-on from File, Install the Material Combiner, and then you're probably going to close Blender and close it, open it back up again. Then you're going to do this and delete the things all using your keyboard. Okay? Okay. This couldn't be easier. Next, click Import Model, unless you have a VRM file, and then you're going to click VRM. Sometimes using these is a little bit better because maybe it does some tricks for the type of file that it's grabbing. But it will usually just predict that, and you can just click Import Model. That's fine. So let's go here. We're going to go here. I'm going to go into uh, the one I downloaded earlier. And instead of the FBX, I'm actually going to use the PMD because I really want to show you this from scratch. So we're going to click here, click Import Any Model, and it's going to import. With any luck... You also have Japanese character support like I do. If you don't, it might look like this. It's going to look like this anyway. You're going to click Fix Model. And with, through the magic of cats and the two to four years of scripting they've been doing, hopefully it just works. Now, you can move around the model by holding down your middle mouse button, and this dollies around the model. You can zoom in and out by scrolling your mouse wheel, and if you hold shift, you can move around like this. That's almost everything you need to know if you're just bringing a model in like this. Later on, I'll do a tutorial to show you how to chop her head off and use her head on another body or whatever, if you prefer, you know, flat justice or something. Okay, so here's this model. The next step is to start pose mode and make sure that it works. So to select things in Blender 2.7, you right click. It's dumb, but you right click. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select one bone like this and we're gonna move it to make sure that she can do things. Yeah, she can do things? Okay, great. So we're gonna, we're gonna hit 
stop pose mode, and hopefully she'll go back to normal. Okay, good. Next, model options. We're going to use all to translate things, like that. That's all we have to do. Next, we're going to skip custom model creation. We're going to skip decimation, because now VR chat allows for 70,000 polys. Thanks, Tupper. Um, next, eye tracking. So, if it worked, you'll have head, eye left, eye right. That's great. If you don't, select head, eye left, and eye right. Now, you also have wink. You probably want either wink or blink in here. If you don't have... If it says wink and there's only one wink, then you probably want blink instead. So I'm going to switch that to blink and this one to wink, just just in case. Um, the FBX is probably just fine, but you might even have a wink L or a wink R. Um, but yeah, just, just find those ones first. Um, click create eye tracking because that's usually all you've got to do. And now you want to click start eye testing. All you need to make sure that it does is this... And this. We're good. Now hit reset rotation. Hit stop eye testing. We're done that part. Next we're going to go to vi Visemes. If the translation worked properly, you'll have A, O, and Ch. Click create Visemes. Easy button dot GIF. Okay. We're going to go to optimization and go to bone merging. We're going to go here first. Okay, we're going to look at these bones. Now, skirt has 12 bones. That's a lot of bones. That is too many bones to make the skirt do flappy skirt things. Um, but uh, so what you can do is you can merge them by clicking on the really big expensive ones and merge the bones. That's usually a pretty good idea. Having smaller bone values makes you report better inside the profiler for the for the game so that's a good thing you can do that um next thing you want to do is atlas if you if you have a button again in here that says you need to download it you need to download it then you're going to click generate material list now this isn't a lot of materials you probably want about four to eight materials max um but i'm just going to be quick and merge them all because i don't care um so we just click save at atlas 2 now, this does sometimes reduce the quality of the files, and you may not want to do this. If you have four materials, it's probably okay. And having separate materials lets you put separate shaders on separate things. So maybe you don't want to do that. But if you just want to upload the avatar as it looks, this is a good way to optimize. So you click Create Atlas, and it's going to create a replacement file for the materials on the avatar. Um, and we're going to get this one big fat combined material. If she still looks good and she doesn't have stuff popping through her head, you're okay. If she doesn't and she does have stuff popping through her head um, or, you know, other bits of transparency don't look right, uh, then you probably want to or deselect some things in the material combiner. Uh, we, you might want to click convert textures to PR, PNG. That's a new feature. It's pretty good. It allows for proper transparency. Um, next... You can do copy, copy protection if you want. That's a little advanced. You probably don't need to do that. This model isn't yours anyway, and you probably don't want copy protection on it. Okay? Okay. So we're going to go up here and click Export Model. We're going to pick the folder that we put it in. I've got my VR Chat Avatar tutorial, and I'm going to call it, you know, my model or whatever. So you're going to click Export FBX like that. Um, now you're done with Blender. Can you believe it? So I'm just going to minimize this for now. So next you're going to open up Unity. You're going to click New Unity Project. I've already made one. Um, call it whatever the heck you want. Make sure it's set to 3D. Um, you're going to wait a bit. Unity is going to spend a bunch of time making a new project file. Hopefully use a folder that has lots of space. You'll notice this Assets folder is empty. So now what I need to do is I need to find my Tutorial folder and I need to bring in a couple of things. Now you did download the VRChat SDK so we're going to drag this into here and then you're going to wait. Be patient. It's going to take a lot longer on your computer than it does on mine. So we're going to scroll down here, make sure that all this stuff is checked. If it isn't, just click all just in case you're neurotic like me and click import. This is going to create a VRChat extension for Unity that will let you do magical VRChat things. Um, there's a couple other things I recommend you get. Everybody used to recommend Cube's Unity shader back in the day, but I actually don't anymore. Um, Cube, you're a good guy, but Noi did a great job too. Uh, there's also a bunch of other shaders out there like ZZ Shader and um, even M-Tune from VRM if you're feeling really fancy and a bunch of other ones too. Um, I've downloaded them already. I'm not going to... I'll probably link them in the doobly-doo, but anyway, you can download ZZ's Unity shaders. Um, that's going to come in a zip file, so you just extract it first and you drag it into here just like you did with the VRChat SDK. Alright, so by now, you should have a 
presence VR chat. We want to click on settings and make sure that you're logged in. It should say allowed to publish worlds, allowed to publish avatars. If you can, good. Okay, so we're going to go back to this model we made it and exported from Blender, right? We're going to drag it right into the project assets folder. Once you've got a model, it automatically creates a prefab. Now, because of the new version of Unity, you've got to do a couple of things. So we're going to click here. We're going to click on materials. We're going to click on use material use external materials and we're going to hit apply this should automatically find the combined material atlas that we created earlier from the optimization tab inside blender like that see next step we're going to go to rig we're going to go to humanoid we're going to click create from this model we're not going to click optimize game objects and we're going to hit apply now we're going to click configure once we're in here we want to make sure that we see a hip, spine, chest, left shoulder, left arm, left elbow, left wrist, again, leg, knee. Now, you can put toe bones in here if you want to. Some people do. Toe. So you've got your left toe, right toe. So if I'm on left toe, I want left toe. Now, this can sometimes help with full body tracking. Sometimes it can make it worse. Um, it also does let you stand on your tippy toes if you're in VR, which is nice. Um, and then here's another step that you want to do here. So we also have to go to head. We also need to get rid of jaw. There's almost always a jaw that gets selected in here by mistake. Set it to none. You can also just click it and click to, or press delete on your keyboard, okay? So we're going to hit apply. And that's going to set the armature up for the model. The next thing we're going to do, as soon as this is done, is we're going to click on muscles and settings. Now, the model should do this if everything works properly. You can test how well the model is going to be able to move by doing this. We can go in, out, okay? And you can do uh, roll in out like this. Just make sure the movement looks good. Um, open, close, same thing. As long as the model has a, a, a lot of movement and there isn't anything like popping out from the vertices. And I don't mean the hair coming out like this. I mean like literally part of the mesh is getting stuck in space or something like that. Then click done. And now you have the model ready to go for bringing into the game. We're going to take this, what's called a prefab, and drag it into here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and just like in Blender, um, you can middle click to move around, but differently from Blender, you can hold right click and use WASD on your keyboard to move around. Now, one of the funny things about this model, this particular one, and this is one of the things I was talking about with material combining, is you want to make sure nothing's popping out of their face. Well, as you can see, there is some stuff popping out of their face. Well, what is it? Um, well, it's some kind of eyepiece. It's probably a gesture that's in here, and you can find those by going to body, and going down to blend shapes. One of these is um, whatever the heck these eyes that are covering everything up is. Now, this is one reason why you might want to have different materials. But there's one other thing that can cause this, and it's called transparency. So if we go to body, and we scroll down a little bit, you'll notice I'm on shader standard. Also opaque. We actually want cutout or fade or transparent, depending on what kind of model it is. Um, this model is actually going, this model is actually cut out the way that this uh, texture mesh is set up, and you'll notice everything is fine now. Um, this is standard shader. It's actually pretty good. You'd be really surprised how good standard shader can look. Um, it also makes sure that you're lit properly in maps that use light probes and dynamic lights, but if you want to uh, be a little bit more tune like, you can use Noe Noe shader, is the perfect one. Um, this particular uh, shader has a static tune light, which means that you won't pick up as much lighting effects. It just sort of fakes it using this tune ramp over here. Um, so the other thing you can do is you can use Noe Noe's overlay shader, and you can use the lit transparent version. Now, I know it looks almost identical, um, but actually it's not. This particular one will allow you to use a non-static tune light and it will pick up the uh, lighting from the map too. Um, we can prove that by right clicking in here and clicking on light and then clicking point light. And as you can see, the lighting on the model is increasing because I've got, you know, lighting here. It's a little harder to see. So what I like to do is use a super bright and odd color so that you can actually see it doing the thing. Now you'll notice that she has a purple hue on her now see um, and that's to prove that this does that now you can you can give yourself various levels of of acceptance of the light from the map and this is a good way to test it just a little tip okay 
So we're going to delete that. So the next step to set the model up is to go to my model, click add component. You're going to type VRC and you're going to find VRC avatar descriptor. We're going to go to um, lip sync and we're going to click Visim blend shapes. We're going to drag the body into this area. So I dragged it from the scene to here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to find each one of these. Cat's Blender plugin made these for you. And all you got to do is fill them in. Um, once you have these in here, uh, you're pretty much done. You probably want, for this particular avatar, female. Some people prefer to use male. The last step is to make sure that this view ball is in the right place. Again, I'm holding right-click and wasding around W-A-S-D on your keyboard, just like you would in a first-person shooter game. So what you want to do here is you want to click here and zoom in a bunch. Now, you may notice that the model disappears when you do that. That happens. If you double-click on body, that won't happen anymore. So now you've got your model. Here's your view ball. Zoom in a bunch so that you can kind of see what you're doing. Um, if you click this box, it'll go ortholinear. If it's not the way you want it, again, you can click around like this to line it up. So you got your view ball. Generally, um, MMD models are set up to be the average height of Japanese people. So this is actually in meters. So if we do 1.45 or so, or maybe 1.4, maybe 1.42, you're going to get right in between the eyes, which is exactly what you want. Now, you do not want this view ball in the head. A lot of people do that. You don't want that. This is going to be 0 0.08, I bet. Nine? There we go. So this will put the view ball half in and half out. This is a, a presentation of where the viewport is. Maybe I want this one a little bit lower. Um, again, it's a refinement thing. But what this does is this is where it puts your view when you're in a VR headset. If you're not in a VR headset, this is a lot less important. But if you are, it's pretty important. You probably want it right between your eyes and halfway inside your mesh. This allows you to get really close to somebody without clipping through them. But it also allows clipping when you need it, like if you want to peek through a wall or whatever. Um, at this point, you should probably save your work. So control S and, you know, just call it my fancy avatar or whatever. Now, it's a good idea once you've got, done all this together is that anytime you want to put a new model in the game, you just click New, New Scene. Then make a bunch of different scenes for all your different avatars, and you don't have to re-import all this stuff or make a new Unity project because it takes up a lot of space. Okay. So now, to get back to the regular view, we're just going to click off here again, and now we have a model. So we've got this, my model, there's the dot, VRChat SDK. Now you're going to click on Show Build Control Panel. You're going to click Build and Publish. So you're going to get this, you're going to get, and actually there is a little bit of a, a weird issue right now with the SDK where it'll pause on you like that. Um, what you want to do is actually just unpause it and then go to the game tab, give it a name, um, and then you click on this. Now I'm going to make this one public, um, and that's fine, and hit upload. Now you can do some fancy stuff with this. I didn't even look at dynamic bones. I haven't done anything else other than that. I wanted to make this as fast as humanly possible. And that's it. You now have a custom avatar inside VRChat. Peace.